Against all my better judgment, I decided to let the internet decide what I was building today. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. I was at a loss as to what to build for this week's episode, so I decided to take a big risk and let the internet decide. Well, let the internet come up with a ton of suggestions and then leave the actual decision up to chance. I asked the good people of Facebook to give me a whole bunch of suggestions of projects to build that I could then draw from a hat and be forced to improvise a speed build of. This was a little bit risky, but I was up for the challenge. In the end, the subject that I drew, and it was no surprise because it was suggested many times, was a stone arch bridge. I was secretly a little bit thankful of this and relieved because some of the suggestions were a little bit crazy and the stone bridge was something that I actually wanted to build anyway. The interesting thing is that the reason I hadn't built a stone bridge yet was that I was getting caught up in the details of how to actually build it and in the end avoiding the project. Exactly what I warned against doing in my last video. So this forced me to follow my own advice. All of a sudden I had to build a stone arch bridge and I had to build it now with no time to plan anything, just build. Thankfully it turned out pretty good. Now, obviously it's not as nice as if I had planned it and taken some more time. I think it illustrates the point that you can improvise builds very quickly, very well. This bridge will look perfectly good on my game table and I am pleasantly surprised with how nice it actually looks. Obviously there's some things that I would have done differently if I were to build this again, but overall, I think it was a success. The entire build time on this thing was just under five hours with then about another hour of paint. So about six hours of work. I'm not suggesting that you try to build something like this in six hours start to finish, but I hope that this illustrates the point that you can improvise builds quickly. And if I can build something like this in six hours, you certainly can build something like this if you give yourself a few days or a few evenings to work on it, no matter what your skill level or experience is. So without further ado, let's jump in and see how I improvised this stone bridge build in just a couple of hours. I didn't want to get too caught up in the details and planning of this project because it was supposed to be a speed build, but I did want to make sure I ended up with a bridge that was at least symmetrical on each side. I decided to make a quick and easy template out of cardstock, and I only had to focus on designing and planning one side of it because I could then flip the image in half, fold the paper, and create a perfect mirror image, giving me a symmetrical pattern. Using a glue stick, I attached my pattern to a piece of inch and a half thick XPS foam. This pattern would act as a jig when cutting out the shape on my hot wire table. Then using the Guider Pro, I broke the piece down into two thinner layers, giving me two pieces to use as each side of the bridge. For the actual pathway, I decided to use some dollar store foam core because it would bend to the curvature of the bridge nicely, but I needed a way to support it. So using the leftover scrap piece from the sides, I found a section of it that would work well to glue in place to hold it, and I just made some mirror image copies of that same piece. Using some hot glue, I attached these support pieces to each side of the bridge. Since the foam core would be returning to the table at an angle, I cut a little bevel on it so that it returned and sat nicely. Then, using the pavement textured rolling pin from Green Stuff World, I gave the foam core a quick and nice little brick textured pattern. Using some hot glue, I attached the foam core to one side of the bridge. And it's important to note that my foam core piece here is a lot longer than it needs to be so that I could cut it to the appropriate length after it was glued in place. 
I needed to finish off the underside of the archway and again I decided to use some dollar store foam core. I just textured it with some tin foil to give it a bit of a kind of concrete look. I bent that piece back and forth just in my hands quite a bit to manipulate the shape so that it would sit nicely when I glued it and I just hot glued it in place. But you'll notice that my main bridge structure is sitting on a bigger piece of foam and what I did here was actually pin it in place on a straight line so that it didn't flex when I glued this bottom archway in and it kind of retained the shape that it was supposed to. It was here that I realized that the walkway was still a little too flimsy so I cut some more support pieces and hot glued them in place in the center of each side. Once the basic structure of the bridge was complete, it was time to get to the fun part and start embellishing it with some details. Adding support columns, stone and brickwork, and that sort of thing is really what makes a little project like this shine and not look like it was built in just a couple hours. It's difficult to touch on all the little techniques used in this build in such a condensed video. So instead sit back, relax, and just watch the process and hopefully find some cool inspiration. Realistically, most of these things I've already covered previously on the channel. One thing I do want to point out, however, is that despite my best efforts, this bridge didn't end up sitting nicely and certain ends of it were lifted off the table. If you run into a situation like this and are going to be cladding the piece with brickwork, you can actually use that brick to correct the problem. Let the piece sit on the table naturally and apply your bricks so that they go all the way down to the table, thus correcting this uneven bottom. I hot glued my first course of bricks so that they stayed in the position that I needed them to stay in to correct that problem. But when doing larger areas, I prefer to use some Aline's tacky glue or PVA glue spread across the entire surface and just go and start setting bricks. This way I don't have to dab hot glue on every single individual brick, which would drive me crazy. You'll also notice here that I leave the bricks overhanging the shape of the bridge. That way, once the glue is dry, I can just perfectly cut them flush to the shape of the bridge with a knife. Doing the stonework on the inside of the bridge was a lot more tedious and annoying, but it was still worth that extra effort, even in a speed build, to really sell the look of this piece. I decided to finish the ends of this bridge off with some nice square stone pillars and just hot glued those in place. And then after that, I was able to flush cut all of the brickwork and other supports to follow the curve of the bridge. To cap off the sides of the bridge, I decided to do it really in an easy kind of lazy way and just cut some thin strips of foam, bevel the edges and draw in some simple grout work. That way I could just attach the entire piece in one go rather than gluing some more individual bricks. If I was taking more time on this build, I likely would have continued on the individual brick technique. I really wasn't liking the way these middle support columns were looking projecting out and was regretting putting them in place. So to kind of make them look a little bit better, I decided to bevel the edges and just texture them a little bit, but yeah, I probably would have preferred if they weren't there at all. I also wasn't really in love with the way the top stone caps were looking. It was making this bridge look a little bit like an army tank tread. So I decided to add another layer of stone build out to hopefully make it look a little bit more interesting. To finish off the end pillars and as well as to add something to the center of the top army tank tread track bridge thing, I made a couple little square stone caps that I just beveled and textured and glued in place. When I got to putting them on the center, I just cut out a bit of that extra piece that I just added on and they fit right in. I felt that the top strip looked a little bit strange being one continuous length, so I just cut in some little grout lines so it looked like individual stone caps. 
And just under five hours into the build time on this thing, I decided to call it done, flaws and all, and move on to the Mod Podge step. I gave the whole thing a coating in my usual Mod Podge and black paint combo. Not only does that make the foam harder, but on a build like this that has all the little individual brick pieces, it helps to lock them in place. I didn't really have much time left for paint, so I just powered through with a quick and easy paint job, which was just a coat of a very dark gray, a dry brushing of a regular gray, then another dry brushing of a lighter gray, and then finally a dry brushing of a off white. Each one of these just getting progressively less paint on the brush, and I really rushed through this. And no terrain paint job would be complete without a black wash. This gets in all the nooks and crannies and really shows the depth and different thicknesses of the brick as well as just kind of blending everything together. And let's be honest, it hides a lot of crappy paint. One crappy thing about using hot glue in a build is that it sometimes leaves these ugly wisps that your dry brushing then picks up upon. And I don't like the way that looks, so I like to cover those up with some flocking. That hides a lot of sin while also making your project look a lot cooler and making it look like you put in a lot of effort when really it was pretty easy. And for one final embellishment, I decided to use my favorite static grass tufts. Check out a previous episode I did where I reviewed these things. I really, really love them. They are a great way to add an extra little cool detail to your terrain or your mini bases. If I were to build another bridge in the future, and I likely will, I would definitely do some things differently because there's some little details on this one that I'm not in love with. But the fact that I improvised the build in like five hours, I think it's pretty good and it's definitely good enough for my table and I will use it in my games. If you'd like to pick up any of the tools or supplies that I use to build this project, you can head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store where you can find all of the stuff that I use and recommend to make sure that you're buying the right tools for the job. And those purchases give me a small commission that help fund these videos. Another really great way that you can help me and this channel out is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. The funds gathered there are in no small part what keeps this channel going and what motivates me to keep making videos every single week. Also, if you're looking to get some direct help from me or some other cool crafters you can get that by joining the black magic craft fellowship where you will get access to my private little facebook group where i'm there to help you out with whatever build problems you may have and just in general talk about the craft i hope you guys found this video useful and inspiring if you did hit that like button and drop me a comment below. If you decide to build a bridge like this inspired by this video, I would love to see it. And the best place where you can post it is on the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook group. There'll be a link in the video description for that. Until next week, guys, cheers and happy crafting. <laughs>